Oh, we have a very nice trick here. Very nice trick. So I'm gonna play Queen D3, attack the knight. They're gonna play knight takes B2. <laughs> we play knight F6 check. Even though our queen's under attack, play your knight to F6 check so that we have checkmate here. So knight C4 was already a mistake because queen D3 attacking the knight and threatening knight F6. If they play something like G6, I'll just take the knight. Uh, here, I guess Black should play F5. After which, probably I'll just take the knight, takes, and takes e4. So for example here, uh, f5 they should play, but takes, 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 and so I already collected a pawn there, and my position is very, very nice with this weak pawn. So knight c4 was a mistake, queen d3, so yeah, they play knight takes b2, knight to f6, check, so can't take the queen, and just takes and queen takes h7, checkmate with the support of this bishop. So a really, really nice um, knockout blow there. Puzzle rush, indeed. So... I've berserked all three games and won all three games, but there's someone who's done even better than that. They've berserked four games and won four games. Uh, oh, I was gonna play an Alapin. Can I play, this is like an Owens, oh, can I play a Leela Gambit here? With Bishop B4, yeah, 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 yeah. So it takes E4. We got a Leela Gambit, but in reverse, because I played this move H4. So that, so so typically this happens in reverse. I'll show you what I mean after the game. Typically this happens with reverse colors, but this is a very, very, very strong Gambit. So you saw there, after A3, they had this under attack. Queen to F6 played here. So now I believe we just play just Snape B5. It's just queen g3 back. Or it's first knight b5, rather, attacking this. Opponent plays knight a6 to deal with this. Queen f6, so there was no comfortable way to guard g7 without their dark square bishop. Either they had to play g6, making some vulnerabilities here, or like king f8, or queen f6, but queen f6 is actually going to leave this unprotected, and so we're going to come after it. We're gonna come after this. So knight a6, something we wanna do is actually this, there's this really nasty uh, sequence with queen g3, threatening c7. And after d6, we can play this with bishop to g5 and um, some really, really nice, some really nice tactics like queen g6, there's knight takes d6 check and bishop to b5. So already though, like when the queen leaves home very often, um, C7 can be very vulnerable and can be very difficult to protect. I might have messed up the order. It might have been Queen G3 first. Regardless, I think this is still quite good. Yeah, opponent. I mean, Knight A6 is the natural move which we just attack this pawn. Right, so there's no castles because of this resource, bishop g5, taking d8. So, tricky spot for black. They have to play d6, or they play rook c8, but I don't think that's a good choice. In fact, their queen might be trapped. Bishop g5, queen f5, bishop d3, queen d5. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna take and repeat this. So rook a8, and we're just gonna come back and a b5. So it takes, hits this rook, so rook c8. 
doesn't really deal with knights here very well because the knight can just take this, hit the rook, and then even just pop right back, give the same issue right there. Oh, in fact, I probably missed even better, which was take and queen c7, really crashing through along with bishop g5. This h4 resource is very, very um, helpful use of a move. Yeah, the Lila Gambit with white. Pretty fun that I was able to get this. This is content indeed. H6, I believe here I actually have bishop g5. Because even if you take, take, then your rook is hanging. And you cannot take mine with check. I could take c7, trade, queen d8. There I'm just ahead of pawn. So I wanted to go for something better. I think this is a pretty nice idea. Now you cannot take it because of takes. And rook takes h1 is not check, very importantly. It's not check. I have my bishop here. So I would just wing your queen. And in that position, otherwise, you have no checks with your queen. So I would win the rook. So the queen had to come to g6. Now bishop d3, there's f5. So my point here was maybe... Well, there is queen e4 check. So actually, I will play this anyway. So f5. I guess bishop e4 is also possible. I'll just take c7. So f5, that's what I was looking at. Now we trade here. And there's no queen d8 resource, which would have guarded the rook in this position. So now they should be losing something over here. Um, before they had queen d8. Oops, now I'm able to take everything. Yeah, really take everything. Uh, oh, they have that. Okay. Okay, but we're winning either the rook or the bishop here. not flag oh that also activated my rooks were kind of dead my rooks were kind of dead this is an interesting game to go over and to look at the intricacies of the Lila gambit let's castle we can do that it's legal seems good this is checkmate yeah nice okay gg so okay let's let's run a computer analysis so while that's running, so the point here, let's talk about this. So with the Leela Gambit, it's actually a gambit for black. If you recall my original video, it's with B3. So against this, what we can do is we can actually give black, give white what they want, which is these bishops, right? And with these bishops, it's very, um, there's a lot of pressure here on E5. And it's not easy to protect because if you play something like bishop d6, then there's like f4 and knight f3, lots of pressure here, and also on g7, which can trap your rook. So e5 get, can get very overwhelmed. Something you can do is just give it up. So it takes e5 and then a6. If white loses this pin on the knight, then they will lose their bishop. And same with bishop a4, there's this. So they must give us this really pleasant capture on the bishop. And upon retreating, there's queen g5. And this is really, really nice compensation for black, really great bishop pair, and already very difficult pawn to protect. And h5 is a useful move in all cases because black is castling long regardless. So really what happened in my game here, I was white, but I realized I was kind of getting this anyway in this position. So I just played this move h4, which actually the engine kind of likes. This could be a lot worse for h4, just 0.7 to 0.5. Um, and so bishop b4 and e2, and so we get the Leela Gambit, except I'm up a move and I have this uh, h4 played. So queen f6 to defend g7. In, in fact, the best move in the Leela is with h2, but h4 does a couple things. Number one, on g6, there's this h5 resource, which can try to take it, uh, really activating the rook. Uh, number two, rook h3 and coming into the game can be quite good. And number three, as you saw in the game, bishop g5, it can support it quite well. So in the game, my opponent plays queen f6, knight b5, knight a6 to defend c7, and queen g3 back. Was that not right? So here, the engine is recommending just bishop d3. Queen g3, so something I was going for here, attacking c7, was if d6. And then there's this very, very nice sequence with bishop to g5, hitting the queen, queen slides over, knight takes d6 check, <laughs> takes, and bishop d5 check, and now with the knight on a6, 
uh, there is no block uh, for this diagonal. In fact, their only legal move is king f8, and after takes d6, uh, here white can actually just take everything. So it's a really, really nice sacrifice. I suppose it was in the other order. This was knight b5. Let me make sure I get this right. Let me check my own gambit. Yeah, so bishop g5 first. Queen g6, then knight b5, you're saying, yeah. This is also not right. Let me make sure that I get this right. It's pretty funny. So this is what we're looking for. This line with queen f3. So queen g6 first to attack this. If d3, so okay, so here's the point. Knight a3, you have a bishop here that is ready to take it um, and grab c2 um, in this position. I guess even then you have other resources like bishop g4 and bishop to d6. So in this position though, if d3 to guard c2, then knight b4, knight a3, and we get the line we want with bishop g4 attacking the queen, queen over, take, and um, this, this very, very fun sequence. So on queen f3, so queen g6 is the most flexible. Uh, so threatening to take c2 in this line. Uh, in my game, I played, I got it a little bit wrong. I played knight b5 before queen g3 here. So still threatening to take c7 and to grab my pawn back. My opponent played rook c8, should have proposed a queen trade, apparently, letting me just take on c7 though and take everything. Uh, in the game, rook c8. And I took a7 and just come back to attack it again. h6, bishop g5, somehow even better, was bishop f4. Really piling up on c7. I like this bishop g5 resource though. My opponent plays queen g6, bishop d3, f5. So I think, yeah, much better for them was bishop e4. Because, so they played f5, now take, 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 and the bishop is hanging on any rook move. Whereas if their bishop is on e4, they can play rook a8 without losing their bishop. So bishop to g5 was a very tricky resource here. Uh, yeah, like you said, with this hanging. Um, so queen g6 in the game, bishop d3, f5 played, take, 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 and now attacking the rook and the bishop here. So rook d8 was, of course, a big blunder, but there's no real good spot for this. They really have are really lacking development. It would be nice if they could castle and coordinate their rooks, but um, of course they cannot. Any rook move, and I would take the bishop attacking the rook. So here rook d8 was also, of course, not a safe square. I have the bishop there, and here we just kind of cleaned everything up um, and won this game. So yeah, good game here. It's an interesting idea if you ever face an Owens. So my opponent started with a French, but also with an Owens right here, bishop b7, a c3. A lot of people here will play e6. If you want, you play this nice move h4, bishop b4, and e2, and you can get a Leela Gambit up a move with this move h4. So I think it's a really, really nice idea here to play this move a3 takes takes and queen g4 uh, attacking g7 and uh, hopefully you've watched my original Leela Gambit video more recently than I have because I didn't even remember the move after queen to f6 um, but yeah it's 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 some very very exciting stuff so subscribe if that one goes on YouTube queen h3 because the h file I don't have right but now I'm threatening rook g8 which will be checkmate and yeah, I think that pretty much does it. I don't know. I didn't see any way to get in front of this. Yeah, this is this is this is a very very strong way to play against symmetrical Italian. So I want to play Bishop G4 and Nate D4 and try and force G takes F3. And the other thing I want to do is G5 G4. Use this G file. Use this pin. Uh, castle if I need to. If there wasn't an immediate knockout, I would have like gone here. I would have stacked my rooks. I would have used all my pieces. But I didn't even need that rook in the end um, because this and queen h3, rook g8, already, you know, I forced she takes f3 and there was an immediate checkmate coming there. So got him there in a symmetrical, really symmetrical kind of position. So if you're going to lose a game, lose it first so that you can still streak. So let's let's still try and do this and jump in front of this arena. Oh, let's get a 
reverse Leela Gambit. Yes, we were just talking about the Leela Gambit. Take my pawn. Oh, queen knight e7. Okay, well, we got it declined. We got no bishop takes e4 here. Oh, but this should be juicy. This should be juicy. Okay, let's get our bishop here. And let's start looking at this king. Let's play let's play e5. Let's offer this as some nice yummy bait. Bait was not yummy enough. <laughs> Alright, let's off a saw. Let's open that back up. Because rook takes, I want to go bishop g5. We're gonna be cooking with these bishops. This guy's open, but I'm not too concerned. I'd like to play queen h5. If h6, we're looking at sacrifices or at minimum a fishing pole. No knight block. G6, so I was going to just slide right back. That's a success in my book. I don't want to go queen h6 because queen f8, there was a, a forced queen trade. So rook takes f2 is coming. However, with my king here, I do have bishop takes e7. So if takes, then king takes f2. And so that means I can focus on other pursuits. So I could just play f3 and then refocus on these pursuits. But I like my pursuits. So here, if takes f2, I think I have just takes e7. And we're in business. In fact, I think I have takes g6 and we're in business. But this is certainly the best move on the board. Also, castle's long. Very playable. But yeah, takes, yeah, my attack looks good. But this queen is overwhelmed. They didn't get these pieces out. And these bishops were just doing a great job. We got an h4, which is an extra move in the Leela Gambit. It's a move I would have wanted to play anyway. We got that in, and so h5 already wreaking havoc with this rook here. Yeah, queen's overwhelmed. Um, takes, I mean, we, as much as I don't love to use my king, they just don't have a ton of resources there. So here I have queen takes g2 and then takes f8. Um, and even if, like, queen h4, interesting move. Queen h4, it's a lot more risk than I need to take. Their queen can also invade. And then they would also kind of have some mate threats. It's probably not the most sensible choice. Well, things aren't exactly so clear as they stand. Queen h4, queen f3. Takes queen e3. Queen e2. I think this makes some sense, actually. Let's keep the queens on. Queen h4, so we cover f2. And I think this is winning. Or I wouldn't have done this. Queen f3 takes g6, and we should just crash through before they do. Of course, I could have castled and just been safe and then just attacked. But let's live life on the edge a little bit. So my plan is queen f3 takes queen e3, just need e2. And I think we have everything covered there. They can play takes e2 and takes h1, but queen takes h7 is checking in that position. I mean, I have a pawn on g6. So what to do? Your queen's under attack, and I'm going to play h takes g6, opening all this. And you can't get to my king. Queen f2 check, take, 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 take h1, take h1. We're going to be two pieces up. So yeah, fun line. You have knight f3, d5, c4, d4, d4, g5. Wow. Do a lot of people play that, c4 and b4? Most knight f3 players I know are either trying to trans... Ooh. Uh, okay, let's trade Rook H4. Check here. I think I have everything covered. I have that covered. It was a sneaky idea, but I just don't think it did that much. I guess Rook F2 check. Queen takes F2. So, King G1 check. So, I have to do this. So, okay, we're trading queens. <laughs> But now you take my rook, and I'm going to get a queen before the rook can cover here. I have bishop f6 to check next move no matter what, um, which is even stronger than just rook takes h1. <laughs> Certainly a very testy way to play this, but I think I had every square covered in all those lines. But yeah, it, it's, it's a really, really fun line 82. It looks like a stupid move, but a3 forces knight takes c3. Beautiful, um, beautiful recapture that really helps the position a great deal. Oh, it is mate. Here and c4. Wow, nice mate there, using all the pieces. Queen is covering that. So, yeah, okay, that, that, was, that was a fun game with the reverse Leela Gambit. So we had it. 
So we had it declined, right? So here, like, like the main line would have been with takes e4, a3 takes takes, tempo on the bishop. Uh, so here, right, any bishop move, and I would win the bishop, right? So even this, uh, they need to keep this pin. So if they're going to grab the pawn, then they come back with queen g4 and these fun lines. My opponent did not take the pawn, and now we're just going to have a3, and we get that recapture because there's nowhere else for this bishop to go. Here, e5 traps it. Bishop a5, b4. So they must give me this beautiful recapture, which opens this all up, gives me this nice center. And so now here come my pieces. So bishop d3, angling this way. a6, not a useful move. Uh, e5, just opening this up, asking for takes g2, rook g1, uh, after which, like, okay, I would have had a field day with all of these guys pointed in this direction. So that did not happen, unfortunately. f5 was played. En passant, bishop g5, rook comes back, and queen h5. So now, like, all my pieces are seriously in business. Uh, what would have made the most sense probably is just the castle, play rook h3, rook g3, and continue looking at some sacrificial ideas. h6, I could probably castle along. Uh, this fishing pole idea should checkmate them. Uh, and very quickly, bishop takes h6 should be on the table, for example, like here. I should be able to look at some ideas like this, uh, and I can come around this pawn to use this file. So, or just rook h3 to start. Bishop g6 also looks like a good move with this pin. Uh, I think probably should set that up pretty nicely. So, g6 was played. Now we step back, which also covers this pawn. Queen f8, which is a sensible move. I mean, this is already plus 3.4. I'm looking at the engine. And here comes h5. The funniest part is my opponent made zero blunders this whole game. Uh, it's just this attack just overwhelms them. So here comes h5 so quickly. And uh, so it takes f2, and yeah, everything I did is right. So castles is very playable. Just keep your king safe and then take on g6 and crash through with all these files and all these pieces. But we played this in a spicy way. So it takes e7, uh, overwhelming the queen on the rook's defense. I mean, yeah, if they just played like knight c6, of course, like something like this, and like rook h6, rook here, and we start looking at rook h8 and takes g6. So this is really not much hope for black either. So it takes f2, takes e7 takes g2, which was an interesting line. Uh, so now my, my queen's under attack, and I, so I play this with queen h4, defending my bishop, covering the f2 square against check and mate, and also looking to checkmate them here. So for example, if queen f3 takes, and there's no checks here. There's queen e3, but knight e2, and now I am just going to crash through here this way, um, even though even though uh, my king is not in the best situation. The queen h6, we were also able to take... And remember here, I'm just ahead of piece in the game. And, and, and if they went for my rook, something I can also do is give that rook and, uh, you know, have bishop six check because this rook is not supporting this. So this pawn is going to be very strong if they don't spend the time to recapture. So they give this powerful check. Looks powerful, but there's no follow-up here. Uh, they only have a couple pieces in the game. And I control all the squares of importance here. And even my rook's helpful because queen c1 would have been checkmate if it weren't for that. This is protected. So rook f2 check, uh, and so this was what they had to do to not get checkmate immediately, but I'm able to promote in this position regardless. So yeah, the, the, the whole line was quite winning. And wow, that was quite accurately played on my part. So fun game. Subscribe if that one goes on YouTube. I really like the reverse Leela Gambit. It's how I play uh, against, the, against the Owens defense. Yeah, it is fun. So we play there with e4, d4, knight c3, and knight g2. So a lot of Owens defense players are playing this e6, bishop b4 stuff. So good line there.